Welcome back. So, in the previous lecture, what we have seen is the fischer tropsch reactions and also the process. We have discussed the Sessol process and the shell metal distillate synthesis process, SDMS process. So, now we move on to the concluding part of our module. We have uh, to cover what we now have to do is methanol to gasoline, MTG. So, this you must have been aware of that uh, there have been concerted efforts by the government of India to convert this methanol directly to gasoline. So, methanol to gasoline thus is very promising. So, there are two major or key process we will discuss that is one by Exxon Mobil, another is on the Halder Tapso, the T gas process. So, today's lecture what we will do first we will see what is methanol to gasoline MTG in short form it is called as then we will also see what is the reaction in thermodynamics. So, there are two ways of doing it. So, one either you have methanol produced, you convert it to gasoline or you have syngas, you produce directly to gasoline. So, there are two approaches. So, one of the approach, the former is actually adopted by Exxon Mobil and the latter is called the T-gas process where syngas is directly converted to gasoline. So, that is the T-gas process. So, that is what I will discuss both these processes, the Exxon Mobil and the T-gas along with the associated reaction and thermodynamics. So, the methanol to gasoline, what are the reactions actually involved in this? So, what happens is the methanol, if I talk about let us say you have a plant, you are already producing methanol and now you want to use it to produce gasoline. So, how to do that? So, methanol to gasoline is not an easy one single step reaction. There is a complex reaction networks, a lot of reactions going on complementary together, simultaneous reaction happening together. But for simple, what to understand this phenomena is actually converted to light alkenes. Methanol is converted to light alkenes. Okay. So, the mechanism is complex, the reaction pathway, the, if you see that is why I was telling the mechanic, the mechanism is complex, the reaction pathway can be streamlined by the subsequent chain of reaction. So, what are the chain of reactions? Just I will write down, so you can have a look at it. The chain of the reaction is first you get the methanol, methanol, I am just balancing it directly. The methanol, it is a reversible reaction, it gets converted to dimethyl ether. Okay. DME plus water. Okay. So, methanol as you know it is liquid and dimethyl ether you know it is a gas, colorless gas, it has a melting part around minus 24 degrees Celsius. So, this is a bit of exothermic reaction in nature. So, you have the exothermicity given by delta H, the delta H is equal to close to minus 23.6 kilojoules per mole. Okay. So, this is what the major reaction. So, the streamlined by the chain of reaction. So, this is the starting chain. Now, what we do with this is we convert it into this dimethyl ether CH3 O CH3. What you do? You convert it into C2 to C5 alkenes. You convert to C2 to C5 alkenes. So, obviously, you will have water as a byproduct. So, in all the reactions, you will have water, the primary reactions. I am talking about the primary reactions. So, this we call is the oxygenation reactions basically. So, what it happens is you are converting the oxygenated products to some product which is final product to be straight chain without oxygen. So, the oxygen atom is replaced in terms of liquid water. Okay. Then what there are set of reactions which are occurring here that is the C2 to C5 alkenes which are formed. Okay. These are then converted to C6 plus alkenes. So, this is a process as I have already discussed in the previous lecture, the different process in oil refinery. So, this is will be a type of let us say an alkylation reaction. Okay. So, you are producing longer chain length, fine. So, once this is formed, what do you do is you see 6 plus, 6 plus means chain length greater than 6. So, this C 6 plus alkenes are then converted to products such as C 6 plus alkanes, now it is alkanes not the C 6 plus alkanes, then you can also have the cyclo alkanes. Then you will maybe having the 
aromatics, so all these things. Okay. So essentially, what you have is the first these next reactions. So if you say this is the first reaction, so if I want to divide these, I can divide the reaction pattern. This is let's say part A, and let's say this is part B. So part A is conversion of methanol into an equilibrium mixture of methanol, dimethyl ether, and water. So this is done by one of the reactor. The remaining reaction, that is conversion of dimethyl ether to alkenes, then lower alkenes to higher alkenes, and then finally higher alkenes to alkane cyclohexane. These are all taking place in the what we call as gasoline synthesis reactor. So B we can tell as gasoline synthesis reactor. Okay. And this A will be called the dimethyl ether reactor, DME reactor. In short, this is also called as dimethyl ether. So, this is a very valuable compound because if you can produce this compound, then the production of alkenes is easier. So, DME reactor. So, in most of the processes, like in the methanol to gasoline, these are the reactions occurring in primarily two different sets. One is the reactor, another is a set of reactors. First is the reactor which converts the methanol into an equilibrium mixture of methanol, DME and water and the second reactor that is a gasoline synthesis reactor, the conversion of dimethyl ether to alkenes and further alkenes to the gasoline products. Okay. So, let us move. So, it means that just now just to summarize whatever I have just discussed previous slide, it starts with the dehydration of methanol to dimethyl ether because this process is equilibrium limited. So, you cannot have complete conversion. So, if you note that I have given a reversibility sign to it. So, it is a complete reaction, it is limited by equilibrium. So, but you have the consumption of DME to light alkenes, the subsequent reactions to be very fast and to other products such as gasoline very fast. So, the forward rate of reaction, so you have a series of reaction, so methanol gets converted to DME and DME gets converted to alkenes. So, since DME to alkenes is a more of a forward based reaction, so the consumption of DME is there. So, it means that you have the this thermodynamic conversion limit that is the equilibrium conversion limit can be taken care of. So, you have any time you have the mixture of methanol getting converted to dimethyl ether. So, typical product distribution I will tell you as we can be seen as a function of space and time. I will see which we will observe that it indicates the sequential character of the reaction. Let us see what is space time, you must be knowing what is space time, space time. Space time means uh, this concept you should you must be knowing in CRE, you must have read chemical reaction engineering. It is how many reactor volumes how many reactor volumes can be treated per hour. So, it means per hour what is the product you are forming and based on that how many reactor volumes you are able to process. So, that is the space time. So, it gives an approximately idea regarding both the conversion as well as the time that is both the conversion at what time these are forming and also what is the amount it is forming. So, let us see with that what we get. So, if I want to draw, I will draw to uh, this axis. So, the y axis, I will draw the y axis first. So, this is I will talk about the product distribution. Okay. This is the product distribution. So, y axis. So, if I want to let us go till from 0 and the y and the x axis, this I will talk about the space time. So, what will be the units of space time? You must be aware that will be hour into meter cube of the reactor. So, the subscript I am writing as reactor volume processed into time per unit of meter cube liquid formed. 
okay this is space time so let us do in terms of 10 units of 10 so if i start from 10 to the power of minus 4 let uh, let me divide it into equal parts you have 10 to the power of minus 3 you have 10 to the power of minus 2 here then 10 to the power of minus 1 then 1 and then uh, you know I am not uh, doing much here it base goes to 1 to 10. So the conversion I will just do till 70 because that is where it is all significant. Now let us draw this line 10 percent it is in percentage the product distribution is in percentage okay 30 then 40 then 50. 60 and 70. So, if you see what are the different products, first is let us talk about methanol because this methanol it will slowly the, this is the methanol curve if I want to draw it. So, obviously, this is getting consumed. So, if it get consumed it will fall down like this. So, this is the your methanol consumption rate. So, it is not processing any amount of methanol it is just falling down with respect to space time. So, if it is falling down, then something is produced and what is produced? See the things which are produced is first is DME as I told you it will be a equilibrium mixture of DME water and the first reaction I am talking about first is the first reaction I am focusing. So, the first reaction will be let us suppose I draw with this with a dotted line DME. So, this is DME. So, methanol getting converted to DME and then you will have water also. So, water comes out somewhere here. So, if I want to draw here, so this is water H2O. So, now you can see this part of the reaction. So, what you have is ultimately you are having the products what is water, methanol and DME. So, the first reaction takes place CH3OH getting converted to dimethyl ether and water. So, you have a equilibrium mixture of methanol, DME and water. So, now what about the products then as the space time. So, it means it is processing this then what happens next the processing then starts with the conversion into alkene. So, DME will getting converted to alkene. So, you see the DME production rate has come down the reactor volumes it is processing is come down. So, what is coming up then? So, you will have a sharp peak of C2 to C5 alkenes. So, if you see the C2 to C5 alkenes almost close to so you are producing C2 to C5 alkenes okay in a fairly long space time okay C2 to C5 alkenes then what else you are also producing aromatics okay so what is this aromatics so you will be again producing aromatics which is again close to aromatics yes you remember the series of reactions we are talking about now all this has gone this water methanol and dme is already produced now what is the remaining product because water you will be producing later on also then uh, other than aromatics you will have this C6 plus the alkanes. So, you will produce the alkanes let us say somewhere from here you have the alkanes. So, I write written here alkanes. When I talk about alkanes means I am talking about both cycloalkanes as well as linear alkanes. Branched alkanes you can always do if you do a isomerization reaction. So, right now we consider on the straight and the cyclic alkanes. So, this alkanes primarily of C6 plus C6 plus okay. So, this is what happens. Uh, so, if you see as you go to the right side of this space time, so your conversion is absolutely nil if I talk about both the reactors. So, the initial reactant methanol DME is consumed and then the DME is getting converted to several products let us it is alkanes aromatics because alkenes is produced here if you go see this alkene is going down your alkanes is going up so alkenes are getting converted to alkanes and aromatics. So, that is what the reaction pathways looks like. So, this is what I wanted to reaffirm and also validate that it is a sequential type of reaction okay. This is what happens in the methanol to gasoline.
now let us discuss the exon mobile so what exon mobile does is it gives a process which actually talks about the conversion of carbon based fuels okay suppose of conversion of carbon based fuels to gasoline products that is the what they do okay what in that what they do is for example so you have first in this exon mobile process you have in the first block syn gas generation okay syn gas syn gas generation so how to generate syn gas now the importance of this exon mobile what they have licensed this process is it can take up any feedstock so what are the feedstocks it can take it can take biomass also so we will come to that later in the last module but the biomass coal natural gas all it can take so feedstock see how it is flexible it can take coal it can take biomass and obviously natural gas which is methane okay coal biomass natural gas so obviously how to convert that just now i told you in the previous lecture it means it requires steam okay it will require the steam so you have to supply steam to this unit so these are the i mean the overall diagram okay so the block diagram so i'll come to the process later on so then uh, you have two routes so why first syn gas is generated from coal biomass or natural gas or with the help of partial reforming with steam syn gas is generated now you can have two process two way to do is either you go for the fischer tropsch just now synthesis so you go to the fischer fischer tropsch reactions you do a fischer tropsch reactions what you have is the products this i have discussed in the last lecture you refine the products you do a refining just like you do in a petroleum refining okay once you do refining you get naphtha and diesel both naphtha diesel other route which actually what they do they'll do both of this other route is you go to methanol generation from syn gas you do a methanol or i write here ch3oh generation the methanol generation from syn gas if you do that finally you convert to m2g that is methanol to gasoline methanol to methanol to gasoline if you go to methanol to gasoline then what you have is finally you have this obviously the product will be gasoline and what are the side products for both the process you will get both carbon co2 plus water is the by product of both this so you see these are the two routes basically so it uses the carbon based fuels coal biomass or natural gas and there are two approaches from syn gas either you go via this fischer tropsch route or this route so this we have already covered in the previous lecture and this we are covering now in this lecture so we have already seen what are the reactions from this to this we have seen the reaction so okay ch2oh2 methanol so this is what exon mobile has done then there is another method which actually directly converts so syn gas to gasoline so they will couple these two so there is no need to separate methanol and then again convert to gasoline so both this can be combined without any extraction of the premeditated methanol so you don't need to take out methanol and then push into another reactor so that is called the we will see later the t gas process okay so this is about the overall general process what exon mobile has developed let us go ahead now the catalyst the catalyst part is very important because on this basis the separation takes place so now for example if you see the catalyst is usually as i uh, will be discussing uh, later also 
that is the zeolite, zeolite based catalyst. So, the name is ZSM5, okay. So, you should know these names ZSM5. So, it is like this name is zeolite Sokomi Mobile. So, it is the mobile company has developed this catalyst. Exxon Mobil has developed this, earlier it was only mobile, now it has Exxon Mobil. So, the Exxon Mobil has developed this catalyst. So, zeolite Sokomi Mobil. So, if you write down the full form, it is Sokoni, okay. because mobile company has patented it. So, they have, so these are one of the huge, uh, you know, the R&D, research and development is going on, develop of this catalyst. So, I will just tell you what is the unique part of this catalyst, because this catalyst is also what it does is, it converts, it can be used in both places, it can convert methanol to dimethyl ether and then dimethyl ether to alkenes, both way, because you can tune the acidity of this catalyst, because what are these? These are actually mixtures of silicon, aluminum and oxygen. So, we call them as aluminosilicates. So, this aluminosilicates, what happens is, if you are replacing, let us say you have this silica 4 plus, you are replacing one of the atom of silica with aluminum 3 plus. So, obviously, you are short with 1 plus 1 oxygen state, what you do, you add hydrogen from outside, so as to neutralize the entire structure. So, once you add hydrogen from outside, you can control the acidity. This is what it is unique, this ZSM5 zeolite. So, that is why it is useful for acid catalyzed reactions. So, in our case, we have already seen some examples in the previous lecture, the isomerization reaction, the, the alkylation reaction, all this can be used, I mean this ZSM5 catalyst can be used in this. So, all does the structure look like, I will just tell you. So, the structure is something like this. So, you have a this structure, if I just draw it, then you will come to know. So, the amount of the R&D goes into developing this structures. So, it has a pentacyl group. So, pentacyl means it is a five membered group. Let us say if I make a five membered group here, then uh, what you do is, uh, if I am not sure if I able to make the entire five membered three dimensional view, but I will try. So, this is at the back. Okay. So, you have this catalyst structure, so you have a pentacyl means you have a pentagon like structure in all the sides. Okay. So, if I want to make it to be clear, this is your this is your front face, this one, the bold ones, these are the front face. So, this type of structure, I am not, so it is like the composition is something like this, sodium is there, sodium N, aluminum N, then silica 96 minus N, O, 192 oxygen, then you have 16 molecules of water. So, this N takes place a number between 0 to 27. So, this is a proprietary item. So, this ZSM, the catalyst mobile as uh, distributing. So, you have a pentacyl type of structure, pentacyl. So, it means you, this pentacyl structure means this five member structure are everywhere. So, if you uh, visualize it to be a 3D image, so you have a five membered ring in all the parts. So, that is all this structure you can modify. So, as I told you if I want to replace aluminum 3 plus with silica 3 plus, so obvious sorry silica 4 plus, silicon as 4 plus. So, I believe you have to add a hydrogen atom. So, it will increase the acidity of the catalyst, increase the acidity. So, it means it will be useful for acid catalyzed reaction. Okay. So, 
reactions can be let us say you have a metaxylene. So, this is very important suppose this, this is one of the classical examples you have metaxylene getting converted to paraxylene. So, it means that uh, when you use this ZSM5 on this reaction, so you have within the catalyst pores they are made in such a manner it will allow the paraxylene to pass through and inhibit the metaxylene. So, that is why you tune the reaction that is why these are very important. Okay. So, usually in this particular type of catalyst that is ZSM has a high silicon to high silicon to aluminum ratio. So, these are characterized by high silicon to aluminum. So, this is very very high. Okay. So, you can then easily modify you add hydrogen replace silicon with aluminum increase acidity do acid catalyst reaction. So, we will see that examples in isomerization is a very important uh, catalyst in petroleum refining industry. Then uh, you can uh, have it in let us say alkylation. So, all these are uses of this ZSM5 catalyst. Okay. So, this is the name. So, 5 is the fifth generation, it is nothing to do with the pore size 5 zeolite zirconi mobile. Okay. So, there is some 5 catalyst you should know this is the catalyst used for the methanol to gasoline process. So, let us now discuss the process itself. So, the process itself is something like uh, Exxon mobile, so it has a fixed bed methanol to gasoline process. So, it has an acidic catalyst. Now, you must be knowing what is the acidic catalyst, just now I discussed. So, acidic catalyst is something where you have more of hydrogen atoms replacing some other element. So, uh, what you do is in this acidic catalyst you convert the crude methanol which has having 17 percent water into an equilibrium mixture of methanol dimethyl ether water. So, you have starting you have started with methanol you convert that to methanol water DME in first reactor. Then what you happen is you take this product out blend with the recycled gas. So, recycled gas when it is coming after the reaction is completed after the gasoline synthesis reactor there will be some off gases. So, blend with those recycled gas. So, what it does is it will like to cool down the reactor. So, you not heat it and send it you cool down and then send it to the gasoline synthesis reactor with the ZSM5 catalyst. So, the temperature rise, so whatever temperature rise because these are all exothermic reactions. So, the generation of it is maintained by the recycling of the cold product gases. So, one of some of the gases which are separated after the gasoline synthesis reaction is completed, it will be sent back to the reactor. So, we will see in the next slide how the process actually exon has developed. So, let us see the process. So, now what you would have is in the process, so here are three parts. You have the first the DME reactor. So, this is the DME reactor. So, you have the reactor bed here. Okay. So, this I will label it as DME reactor, hmm, dimethyl ether reactor. So, uh, it enters a feed enters at around the temperature at 590 Kelvin or close to 580 Kelvin and because of the exothermicity it comes out at around close to 690 Kelvin. Okay. So, now you have one stream at this stream let me draw the other the gasoline synthesis reactor then I will maybe I will complete the loop. So, what they do is they use a series of these gasoline synthesis reactor adiabatic reactors. So, what happens is uh, when you use a series of this reactor, there is the catalyst, it may deactivate. In fact, the deactivation rate is pretty high, it is within months it deactivates. Deactivates implies coke deposition is there. What you do? You then send the oxygen, you combust it, take away as CO2 and again reuse. So, if you have series of reactor, once one of the reactor gets deactivated, you take that out means you disconnect it from the loop and you try to carry out the reactions in the other reactors. So, that is why it uses a series of reactors. Let us say if I make some reactors here, this is let us say one reactor and then uh, let us say there is another reactor I am drawing. So, it is on top of each other. Okay. You have another reactor here coming. Okay. Then another reactor I just draw outside.
So it is involving that this reactor is now out of the loop and this reactor is used for the reuse of the catalyst because the catalyst here it is. So these are all set of series of gasoline synthesis reactors. So they are lined in series. So I just connected them just to make you understand these are in series reactors. So what happens is the effluents which are coming out from the dimethyl ether reactor what happens is here you have this methanol getting converted to DME plus water. So you have methanol DME water equilibrium mixture fed to this gasoline synthesis reactor. So once you fed it so it will be fed at this temperature. So the temperature pressure is around 22 bar and the pressure is around 22 bar temperature is around 620 Kelvin. So you send this to the reactors. Uh, what you do you collect you collect all the effluents in a single loop obviously when you are putting inserting it here you are also inserting here also on the other reactors also and I will make it dotted to indicate that this reactor is taken out from the loop means it is trying to be uh, the catalyst is again regeneration part this is for use for regeneration. Then the entire product actually is whatever the effluents which are coming out okay they are then uh, uh, sent to the, the further processes like so this processes is coming out here but prior to that what you do is you need to heat the methanol and send it. So this is the dimethyl ether reactor. So methanol is sent like this so this is connected to the inlet feed so this is transferring heat so since the effluents are heated up exothermic reaction transferring heat heating up the methanol feed and it is sending. So this is the CH3OH as feed okay. So these are the these four set of reactors are the gasoline synthesis reactor. So now what to do with the products, what you do is you take it out and then separate into liquid and gas phase here. So you have the liquid phase coming here, so you have the water and then the off gases, so off, off gases is primarily the gases means the dimethyl ether, so all these what you do you compress it and send it back, so I will just draw it here. So. It is compressed so this is the off gases okay the off gases is coming out this so this you call as the water is also coming down here so you have water present in most of the reactions so water is coming out off gases are sent back it is compressed it is compressed and sent as a the recycle so recycle of gases is sent back to the reactors to maintain the or lower the temperature rise in these reactors so these are of gases sent back the, because all the heat is already given out hmm, the effluent gases then they are separated and sent back to the gasoline synthesis reactor so then what you do is you have a deethanizer so this is again a packed column So what you have is you have C2, C2 minus coming out and remaining product so this is called deethanizer. okay. So remaining you settle for a stabilizer is something like of absorption column. Again you have a packed column here. 
packed absorption column. So, what you have is LPG, you have this LPG that is C3 and C4 and then what you have is gasoline finally, the heavier will be coming down. So, this is called a stabilizer. Stabilizer, okay. Single hull. So, you have a deethanizer, stabilizer, synthesis reactor, and DME reactor. So, these are the four parts of the ExxonMobil MTG process. So, you have separate out the ethene part and the remaining part C3, C4, and onwards and sent to the stabilizer where it gets separated from to LPG and gasoline respectively. So, this is the entire ExxonMobil process, and these plants are running in several parts of the world with similar loop. So, that is what uh, this, what is the integral part here is the catalyst ZSM5 and this is also a catalyst with the, so ZSM5 is here, the catalyst beds are here, okay. So, only issue is the coke deposition deactivates the zeolite catalyst, thus the composition of the reactor output is not constant. So, it has 5 parallel reactors where one of them, so if you see I have made 5 parallel reactors where one of them is used for the regeneration of catalyst. So, I have made them dotted so that it means that it is taken out and then used for regeneration. How to do a regeneration? You just burn off, you burn carbon in the stream of oxygen. So, you get CO2, take it out from the catalyst, okay. So, ZSM5, you have the carbon content deposited here. So, you burn it, get carbon dioxide. So, this is what? the process summary about ExxonMobil. So, now what we do is see what is the favorable uh, process. If I want to compare what are the process means about the product profile. So, in any industry why will they do such a loop if the other fisher traps can do that. As I told you there are two alternative ways of doing is either through fisher traps method or through this MTG method. So, why would you do that MTG? Because you need a narrow product range, you need a narrow product range for increase the octane number. You know, in Fisher trough synthesis, if you see this is a low temperature, fixed bed and high temperature, they have varying components, one will have more of waxes, one will have more of alkenes. So, product range is difficult. So, can we see what is the product range? So, they have defined it into let us say you have this C2, this is C2 minus, this is called the fuel gas. What are the different products they get? Then you have the C3 to C4, which is the LPG. Then you have the C6, C5 to 11, which is the gasoline or the petrol, we call it gasoline. These are the different products you get cut. Then you have the C12 to C18, which is the diesel, the longer hydrocarbon is a diesel. Okay. Then uh, you have is C19, the wax, the waxes are very high in linear chain. Then the oxygenates, oxygenates means they are remaining that if there is not much conversion of this methanol what is left. So, we, if we compare it, you have let us say we have these two process, one is the low temperature, low temperature Fischer troughs using cobalt catalyst, cobalt as catalyst. This is the one, you can also compare to high temperature, FT, iron catalyst, FE catalyst. And then the, our MTG process, which just now we have discussed. Now, in this it is more towards the higher side of the waxes. So, if I want to uh, draw out a product distribution wet percent, so it is something like that, it is equimolar 6 percent, 6 percent of this LPG 6 percent, then you have 19 around close to gasoline, then diesel is close to 22, waxes is pretty high because it is a low temperature and around 1 of gasoline. So, you have more of these compounds waxes, then again you have to do hydro cracking to convert this into gasoline products. In high temperature also similar, but here it you have more of this products. So, it is 15, 23 percent of LPG and gasoline is 36, 16 percent of diesel, then 5 percent each of waxes and oxygenates. 
So, if you see it is more towards because the high temperature favored more towards the smaller chain length. Now, for MTG you will be very surprised to know you have only 1 percent of this fuel gas, the LPG is close to 10 percent and remaining everything is between C5 to C11, 89 percent. This is nothing, so you do not have any product whether it is C12, C18, C19, oxygen. So, you have all this concentrated around 89 percent of gasoline. That is why many of the industries if you have a source of methanol or if you do not have a source of methanol, if you have a source of syngas that also. So, but the source of syngas if it is there then it can be used in the site itself, in the location itself to produce gasoline. So, if you see one of them is more towards the shorter chain, one of them is more towards the longer chain, one of them is only to the gasoline. So, obviously, you will prefer this MTG that is why this is gaining ground. Okay. So, what are the things we have learned? We have seen that uh, amount of its high exothermic in nature, but there is a fast deactivation of catalyst in months. Majority of the carbon methanol is transferred to gasoline range hydrocarbons 89 percent, we have seen 89 percent close to 89 percent. The remaining products are light alkenes, alkenes and coke. No hydrocarbons greater than C11 are created. This is the biggest advantage okay, so which corresponds to the end point of gasoline. Shape selectivity of the zeolite catalyst which prevents hydrocarbons with carbon numbers outside the gasoline range. So, what is this? How does it do it? Because of this shape selectivity, because of the catalyst ZSM5 catalyst, it does not allow the longer chain hydrocarbon to pass through, it will only allow the short chain to react and pass through. That is why it is highly selective because of the shape. So, then comes we have seen methanol to gasoline. Then can we convert syngas directly to gasoline? Yes, we can do it. The process is Topso integrated gasoline synthesis. Topso is the name which is from the firm Halder Topso. So, Halder Topso is a big, a very well known licensing firm. It can give us both about the process as well as the catalyst. So, in this case, it has developed the process, the Tigas process. The Tigas process created is to minimize the capital and energy expenses of gasoline production. How does it do that? It combines the methanol synthesis and the methanol to gasoline phase. So, it will combine both these reactions into a single loop without isolating methanol as intermediate. So, in the previous case what we have seen, you take out methanol after the DME and then insert it into the gasoline synthesis. Here it is combining both of them together. So, it can be used in isolated places so as to collect inexpensive natural gas. So, if you have let us say if you have inexpensive natural gas, you can immediately put a plant and produce gasoline. So, that is where it can be used. It has a process step at 510 to 550 Kelvin and a pressure of 30 to 80 bar. Syngas is transformed to a mixture of methanol and dimethyl ether over a bifunctional catalyst or a mixture of classical methanol catalyst or dehydration catalyst. Either you use a bifunctional catalyst or a mixture of classical methanol and dehydration catalyst. So, not much is known about the catalyst, I will not discuss the catalyst in detail because the proprietary item. So, let us see, but the important thing is for this process to be successful, we need to know what should be the right syngas composition, means what should be the ratio of hydrogen to carbon monoxide. Because this ratio is very important because you need to have more and more of DME, less and less of methanol. Okay. So, to convert you have to do some experiments priorly. So, what they do? So, in this particular condition how did they develop this condition? This is the manner they did it. So, if I want to draw the thermodynamics of it, again you have the y axis which is the the conversion limit when CO plus CO2 is there, how it is converted to syngas, it is conversion means what how much it is converted to CO and CO2 and then you have the pressure in bars. So, if you see if I want to draw it this goes from let us from 60 bar what is the appropriate pressure you need to do first is pressure then you will go to the molar ratio first is pressure. So, you have two variables where you have this H2 to CO ratio for this T gas and then the pressure. Okay. So, this pressure is what we are discussing here, what is the appropriate pressure you need to do the experiments. So, if I do it between 0 to 70, 60, 50, 
So, the pressure is something like this you have the methanol concentration from this 60 bar. So, it is 10, 20, 30, 40, let us say 50. Okay. So, it will be going something like this and uh, for methanol production So, this is a mixture of CA. So, if you see if I want to see a 30 bar, so at this I mean it might may have wrong, drawn it bit. So, it should be, uh, so at this you have the maximum conversion of CO and CO2 to methanol and DME. So, you should conduct the experiment here, you have less amount of only methanol. Okay. So, all the CO and CO2 if they are used as feed they are getting converted to CHTOH and DME in the Tigas reactor. So, your pressure is set to 30 bars. Okay. Now, what about this H2CO ratio? So, what they did in this? So, they converted number of experiments. Okay. When they converted number of experiments, what they got is again I will draw a y and x diagram to make you understand what is that ratio where the T gas process is conducted. So, again the y axis here is equilibrium mole percent. Okay. Equilibrium mole percent. Okay. So, you have 100 here. So, 50 and 0. So, I will not make the others. So, if you I start for 0 0.5, you go here 1, 1.5, 2, and then 2.5. Okay. So, they have seen that uh, this DME, if uh, suppose this is 80, it goes something like this. While CO2 will go something 6 starts with 60 and the amount of CO to be converted goes here. So, this is if I can write down. So, this portion above is all DMI dimethyl ether. So, if you have a equilibrium mixture at a ratio. So, if I want to draw this ratio maybe I use this. So, if I want to draw here so, this they have found as unity as, so this is the H2 to CO ratio. So, it means at this composition you are having more of DME in between you have CO2 and if you go down the equilibrium mole constant primarily comes to CO. So, at this particular H2 to CO ratio you have then you have also other products also at this end which is forming that is your uh, methanol, this region is methanol, the remaining this region is water. But what we need to do is produce more of DME. So, the equilibrium mole percent of DME is the highest when you go above this range. So, you have the highest percent here above this. So, you have what they have focused is they have taken up this as H2 to CO ratio as as equal to unity. Okay. So, this is what you do a conversion process of the equilibrium concentration, how they are converted to DME, CO2, CO2. So, you have fixed up the ratio and the pressure as 1, sorry pressure as 30 bar. You may like to visit this particular website which talks about this particular variation of the equilibrium products of DME, CO2, CO. Okay. So, let us go ahead. So, gasoline, so what is the process? The process is gasoline from synthesis gas. In the STG method, it is well suited. So, it can take up fish stock like coal, pet coke or biomass, all of which use a gasification based process to create syn gas, which is a mixture of H2CO and CO2 and H2CO2 ratio that is near to 1. Why 1? I told you that is where the DME composition range is the highest. Following the generation of syn gas by gasification of steam reforming, the syn gas undergoes oxygenated synthesis based on either the methanol synthesis 
to synthesis reaction that is MTG or the integrated methanol DME synthesis according to the reactions below. So, what are the reactions which are happening? So, carbon monoxide first will react with hydrogen to form methanol is the first reaction. So, now I am writing S2G huh? synthesis gas directly to gasoline then you will have carbon monoxide reacting with the water produced water to produce CO2 these are set of reactions which is possible. Then the methanol itself Okay. So, these are the set of reactions which are happening when you, you do a steam reforming after the steam reforming these reactions takes place. So, carbon monoxide hydrogen forms methanol or it can also combine with water to form carbon dioxide or it can form the methanol can react to form dimethyl ether. So, this is exactly these three reactions I have shown in the previous slide how the equilibrium components are distributed okay, to find out the optimum H2 to CO ratio. So, the next step is to convert this to the gasoline. So, how to do that? So, if you see now gasoline from methanol or DME, the product stream from the methanol DME synthesis is diluted with recycled gas and delivered directly to the subsequent stage for the synthesis of gasoline. This phase is carried out in parallel adiabatic gasoline reactors that provide intermittent catalyst renewal. Methanol and DME, they are transformed to gasoline using the following reaction. So, what are the reactions which are happening? So, the reactions which are happening is let us say we have this methanol produced in the previous step, it is getting produced directly to alkanes. So, NCH2 I will write, so NCH2 may be any of the fuel NH2 and then you have NCH3 the dimethyl ether getting converted to N of Okay. So, this CH2 here denotes the hydrocarbon product. So, these are all hydrocarbon product. The net reaction thus can be formulated as. So, what we have is finally, we have the oxygenated, oxygenated, what are the oxygenated compounds? The methyl, methanol and MeOH and dimethyl ether. This is getting converted to what? It is converted to C12, then you have C34, it is LPG and then you have C5 plus gasoline and then water and heat. So, this is the entire reaction happening in the T gas process. Oxygenated compounds are converted to C12, C34, C5 plus H2O and heat. So, let us move ahead and see the overall process. The overall process is very simple. You have the syngas coming in, CO plus H2 coming in. So, you have what you call the synthesis unit that is CH3OH or DME synthesis. So, here both this formation takes place from syngas. Okay. Once it does, you go to the gasoline synthesis. you go to gasoline synthesis, then you go to distillation, so what you have in distillation you will have some products, so recycle it, recycle it and send it to the syngas back again, so you separate out the syngas, one part is separated and sent back to the syngas as a feed and some part is sent to the gasoline synthesis, there may be unreacted methanol DME, the remaining CO and H2 is sent back to the syngas. After distillation, you have also have off gases, you have to treat that off gases, off gases. So, finally, what you get is C3C4, the gasoline which is the major product and you get water. So, thermodynamic constraints of methanol synthesis are removed in a manner similar to the methanol to gasoline process, the methanol DME mixture is transformed to gasoline. 
A natural gas steam reforming process demonstration plant is already operational in Houston, Texas. Recently plans have been announced to test a biomass based T gas process. Okay? So, you understand the difference between MTG and T gas? It is this entire these two steps. So, there is no methanol intermediate removal of methanol. So, you would combine these two and then you go to distillation and separate out the products. So, let us see the overall process diagram how it looks like. So, you have the syngas coming in here. So, you have the syngas, it is getting compressed, then you go to the oxygenate, oxygenate reactor. You go to the oxygenate reactor, then what you do is you have a separator here. So, separator, so what does this separator do? It will separate out the lighter and the heavier compounds. So, what is the heavier compound here? Heavier compound is primarily the methanol rich phases. So, you will have the CH3OH one of the compound, then you have the compound hydrogen also little bit CO and water. So, all these are the aqueous phase present. So, these are the compound which are present in the heavier phase. In the lighter phase what you have is primarily H2, then you have CO, CO2 and DME. So, this DME, this particular phases and this CH3O, these are the key components separated out. Now, once you separate out, this is then sent to another stream. So, this let us see what happens to the lower stream. This lower stream is sent to the gasoline reactor. So, this is the this is the gasoline reactor. What you do is send it to this gasoline reactor, convert them into linear alkene chain ends, then you separation, you do a separation. You have light ends, light ends, then gasoline and then water. So, then what you do is uh, or this separation while you do, you separate out the DME and the CO2 and send it back to here because this DME some may escape. So, you have this CO2 and DME coming out, it may go without reaction if there is any. So, so this DME is also present here. So, what you do is uh, then uh, you treat this treat the off gases here, you treat the off gases in a combustor or a gas turbine, you have send in oxygen, you treat the gases, you get a high pressure, then you are sending out high pressure reaction, high pressure reaction, you are sending out carbon dioxide to the outside. So, ultimately what you do is you actually use primarily this is you are taking out CO2. So, the lighter gases is primarily CO2. So, this CO2 you are combusting while as it is thrown outside. So, this will be a mixture of H2, then it may be CO, CH4, CO, CH4, then you have the mixture C2H6, ethene and then also you have nitrogen N2 also present. So, this is the entire reaction which is called the T gas process. Okay? So, this is a separator, you separate out the components and some part again from this some part DME. So, the DME is again separated if they are not converted in this oxygenated reactor. If they are not separated, it comes out this DME actually, this DME comes out here, separate out and sent to the oxygenate reactor. So, this is about the T gas process. So, this has been you can find it out from the uh, actual the website of this uh, Helder tub. So, you can find it out this uh, entire flow sheet in details. So, moving ahead. So, finally, we come to the end of this lecture. What we have seen so far is the mobile and the T gas process. So, I will just in briefly I will discuss what we did the methanol to gasoline. So, 
So, for the methanol to gasoline that is MTG, Mobil is the one which has developed the process. So, the summary, okay. Syngas converted to CH3OH, okay. Then I am putting a column here, then this CH3OH is getting converted to DME and this DME is getting provided to gasoline. Okay. This is the M2G. Now in the TOPSO process, TOPSO what we have learnt is that is the T gas process, syngas getting directly converted to CH3, OH and DME and this CH3 DME is getting converted to gasoline for gasoline. Okay. So, this gasoline is what stands for uh, this one of the plant uh, all are there these two plants this major part A and part B they are present worldwide. So, this was all about the mobile and the T gas process we developed extensively today. So, I will ask you to go to this whatever flow sheets I have taken to follow this overall process from this book, Jacob's book and the uh, Tigas process you go to their website, Topso is the company and Exxon Mobil also you can go to this methanol to gasoline, this entire flow sheet and other catalyst whatever is there, everything has been discussed. Okay. So, in the next lecture what we will do is we will see some uh, process flow sheeting of this uh, fuel additives to enhance the knocking characteristics, we will see ethyl terbutyl ether, okay. then we will conclude this module. Thank you. Thank you.